What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinter Lens content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys. Well, uh, shout out to International Travel Channel uh, on my five biggest takeaways video from this most recent town hall. Uh, one of the, well, I guess it was a bonus item, but Weird Beard has a uh, survey that he's asking people to do. It's going to take a little time. I think he said it's like 60 questions, but he's really trying to see where the community pulse is, where the community sentiment overall is, and what are some things that, you know, they could get feedback on to potentially improve. So International Travel Channel, shout out to you. Um, just he, they, they left a comment saying, why don't you fill out the survey in a video so we can follow along with your answers? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to fill out the survey anyway, so why not? Now, I'd, I've not read the questions. I have no idea what to expect. And so so uh, I'll be typing and, and, and working on this as we go along. So let's see. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. But I'm going to start with After Sound. All right. So before we ask any questions about guilds and brawls, tell us After Sound. How do you currently feel about Splinterlands as a game? I'm going to go with eight overall. Uh, how do you currently feel about Splinterlands as a Web3 project, including the tokenomics? I'm going to go with an eight as well. Have you recently, in the past six months, become interested in any new Web3 blockchain games? Yes. And which ones and why? Did it say last three months? Uh, I like Undead Blocks. I like Genopets. Um, I mean, Alluvium, but I, I haven't actually bought anything in there. But I am following several of those somewhat closely. So in your personal opinion, what motivates you to stay, uh, what motivates you the most to stay involved in Splinterlands? Ooh, okay, so drag and drop. Um, let's see. I gotta put I, I gotta I gotta put community up first, honestly. Uh, community, let's see, monetary profit. I'll probably put second. Fun is third, and then gameplay strategy. So that's how I'm feeling. Answer the question honestly. The biggest mistake Splinterlands is currently making is, ooh, the biggest mistake Splinterlands is currently making uh, is, you know, I'm actually going to say uh, running more more long-term analysis on on like asset supply uh, because for example like that I think the the new soulbound reward cards are going to be an issue where stuff was like you know they, they didn't say if there was going to be a print rate they didn't say how long it's going to be just kind of one to two years um, so I just want them to be I, I my, my hope is that the team can be much more um, ahead of things rather than just being like, let's do it. And then, you know, adjust later. So how many months have you been involved in either playing or buying products from Flutalands? I'm going to put 18 because it's been roughly that amount of time. If you had to guess how much money, uh, you have spent on Splinterlands and Splinterlands adjacent items and projects. Oof. Um, well, it, it definitely was an investment for me. So I'm probably in the G category. All right, so now that that's out of the way, we want to start by hearing what your overall thoughts are on guilds and brawls. Awesome, let's do it. So overall, I enjoy guilds and brawls inside of Splinterlands. Yes, I, I do enjoy them very much. I think guilds and brawls are important to the Splinterlands uh, and the game ecosystem. Uh, I do think that guilds and brawls are important. I believe the guilds are fair and balanced and believe that certain guilds don't have advantages over other guilds. Mm, ooh, uh, you know what? I'm going to go with three on this. I think I'm going to generally agree, but until we figure out like the high level bot situation, that's a very anti-competitive behavior. All right. So I think there is a variety in the different brawl types and that there are different brawl types for every kind of player. I strongly agree with that. Uh, how important do you consider it to be for the guild's system to connect to other areas of the game? For example, having buildings that grant benefits on land. Uh, I would love that. I would love for the entire game to be interconnected. So I'm actually going to go with 10. My favorite thing about guilds and brawls is, uh, honestly, the sub, sub communities created, communities created and the cooperative effort in, um, in game battles. I mean, I know it, you're not doing it together, but still. My least favorite thing about guilds and brawls is, oh, uh, lack of ownership uh, in guilds. I look forward to the cont contribution point system so that people will not feel like 
they are at risk of losing everything if they get kicked out. Sweet. All right, I think the UX, UI design of guilds and brawl systems looks good. It makes me want to play more. Uh, I mean, I think it's acceptable, so it's just three. What is the worst part about the UX, UI of the guilds and brawls experience? Um, I would, I would love, let's put it this way. I would love a more analytical results page where you can dig into results for the entire guild. All right. So I think that guilds and brawl system doesn't need any updates or new additions. And it's fine the way that it is strongly disagree. But uh, I'm just one for continuous improvement. So rank these things when it comes to the best part about guilds and brawls, in your opinion. Oh, okay. So ability to earn gladius cards, economy impacts, EC sync, competition, earning financial rewards. Okay, so community aspect is definitely at the top. Um, I like the earning financial rewards now as well. Ability to earn gladius cards is awesome. Actually, I'm going to put competition up there. Uh, ability to earn gladius cards. Uh, I'm actually going to put economy impact because uh, I would love to see more DEC syncs in the future and then guild store at the bottom. Cool. All right. So rank these buildings based off how useful you believe they are currently to a guild. Um, well, this isn't really, uh, I mean, you need the hall, so I'm just going to leave the hall at the top. Uh, I would say that arena is probably there than lodge barracks and store. Okay, are there any type of guild buildings? And the, and the reason that I put Arena second is because now that you can earn, that becomes a pivotal part of this, right? People want to earn. They want to engage in other types of playing, uh, playing behavior that will allow them to earn. And so guilds offer that now, and I think that's why it's important. So are there any type of guild buildings that currently don't exist that you wish did? Oh, man, these are, these are tough to answer while I'm recording and on the spot. Um, uh, let's just say I would... I would like to see guild buildings that utilize utilize vouchers, Rooney, and maybe even monster burning slash staking. I think that'd be pretty cool. Like sa sacrifice the monsters at the altar. <laughs> we need more. We need more monster sinks. That's for sure. All right. Do you believe that the guild store currently? offers enough items that leveling it up is worth the cost of DEC. Uh, no, we, we're struggling with this right now. We we put off the guild store for so long, we actually just got to level six. So what items do you wish were included in the store? Again, these are very open-ended. Um, maybe, oh, see, the barracks already has so many interesting things. Uh, the potions are good. What other, what items, like I don't, I've never used the spyglass, for example. So what items do you wish were included in the store? I'm trying to think of like in-game items. Uh, you know, I, I, just to keep this thing going, I think I'm just going to go NA right now. I, I mean, I want to see more items. I just can't think of anything on the spot. Um, and I don't want to just put an answer there to put an answer there. So. If we can go back to it, then we will. But if not, no worries. Do you wish that the guild store offered more new items that you could purchase using vouchers? Yes, 100%. Would you be excited if there was some uber powerful, useful item unlocked for sale at the high guild store levels, which would tie into the land system in some way? Um, I, I would love for there to be some high powered stuff. I just like if it's at high guild levels or high guild store levels, then I feel like it's somewhat gated. But that does get people to to burn more DEC. What, what about a very powerful item that ties into land? Uh, does excite you. I just I just want to see interconnectivity between all aspects of the game. So for example, right? Like in the future, land that has arenas as the building that is built upon them is going to be where these ranked battles are held. So I, I love that. I think that's a cool little thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's a part of a way of making two separate aspects of Splinterlands, right? The card game, card battling game, and the land game uh, bring them together. So I want to see guilds kind of enter that arena too, pun intended, and, and be part of it. 
All right. So do you agree that this is a problem? Guild members can contribute a lot of resources. Yes. Yes. A huge problem. Do you agree that this is a problem? Bots are entering into frays and ruining the experience. Yes. Yes. hundred percent. Do you agree that this is a problem? Newer players don't have a chance competing against the guild full of players who have been here longer. Uh, no, actually, I'm going to go with one. I don't think that's I don't think that's a problem, mainly because I I like the idea of there being a certain element of proof of time. If you've been around for a while, I, here, here's the problem that we that we run into so many times. It's just like, OK, well, somebody new can come in and buy their way to champion. And then then you're just like, well, it's a game about whales versus uh, or whales versus like poor people. Right. Or people or, or minnows, whatever you want to call. Uh, but then then the other flip side of that is just like, oh, somebody who's been in the game for a while, they're going to have uh, advantage with their gladius cards or um, or their soulbound reward cards now. Right. And I, I, I think that if we have a mix of that, then it's fine where you can buy some cards to get to the top. But you can also be here from the beginning, start earning them. And make your way to the top like that so that somebody who's coming in doesn't have that. So it's that, that's that's why I don't think it's as big of a problem. So do you agree that this is a problem? Guild's not having the ability to change ownership and designate a new different leader. Uh, I'm going to go with four on this. Do you agree that this is a problem? Uh, there aren't enough incentives to encourage players to move up in fray tiers. Um, I mean, I feel like SPS is a pretty big I don't want to say that this is a problem, so I'm just going to go with... I'm not, I don't want to say this is a big problem, but uh, I'm going to go with four, three or four. Let's just go with four. I mean, SPS is there, but I would love for there to be other things too, other potential benefits in the game. It takes too long to earn and level up Gladius cards. Uh, I actually don't think that this is a problem. Now we're going to ask some questions about how you use guilds and what kind of player you are. Awesome. So how likely are you to agree with the following statements that relate to you and your guildmates? My guildmates and I get along. Uh, yeah, very likely. My guild have fun entering brawls together. Very likely. I feel like I'm evenly matched and skilled compared to my guildmates. Uh, kind of likely. I mean, we're all over the place. I feel like I'm evenly matched in assets compared to my guildmates. Uh, not at all. There's some people who have been here for a while. My guild is full of people who enjoy being part of the guild. Yeah, I'd say very likely. If you had to estimate, what do you think the average league level is for players in your guild? Ooh, um, I'm going to go with gold just because we do have some silver level players. And we have diamond level players. Uh, actually, I'm going to go with diamond because I'm technically in diamond now. And there's just a couple of folks that are really starting to stretch, which is great. So does your guild currently uh, or in the past actively recruit new players? Yep. How do you currently look or find new players to be added to your current guild roster? Um, honestly, through through YouTube and social media, <laughs> we've we've gotten so many guild guildmates from just the people on this channel, which is dope. Some people have entered in with their alts, which is cool. Some people have entered in with their mains, which is awesome. Like so. Um, I'll put media there. All right. So, what is the importance of various items when you're looking to add somebody to the guild? <clears throat> okay, so their current card collection, their skill level, previous guild associations, their league level. Uh, I think personality should go towards the top. We want cool people, but then again, our guild isn't like super, super serious. I would say that their skill level is probably next. Then their card collection. Uh, their previous guild associations is like not, not an issue. Their ability, their the resources they are able to contribute, the card collection. So yeah, mainly because we have um, you know 500 per season and 100 per fray. So let's say that Splendor has added a section inside of the website that allowed for players to post that they were looking for guilds to join. This is a feature you'd be interested in. 100%. I think this would be great. Maybe not for us because we're we're somewhat set. Obviously, we're we're going to continue to look for new players as uh, some may leave, but I think we could definitely use that. What sort of attributes would you want to be able to search for by players? Example, I want to find gold league players. Uh, what sort of attributes would you want to be able to search for for players by? Example, I want to find gold. Um, well, collection power won't be a thing in the future. Uh, okay, so you, I want to look for gold foil, league level. Um like a casual, like, you know, how casual they are versus how serious they are. I'm just going to leave it at gold foil league level. Let's see. All right. So how likely are you to agree with the following statements that relate to you and your financial contributions to your guild? I'm the one who has contributed the most assets 
in my guild. Nope. My guild mates and I actually talk about how we are going to spend our resources for our guild. Yep, we do this all the time. My guild mates and I have plenty of resources to contribute to building our guild. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody's good about it. So I want to go to the highest guild tier available regardless of financial incentive. Um, I mean, I, I, it's not regardless of financial incentive. I want to go there because of the financial incentive. But I'm just going to say very likely. So my guild is full of people who only think about money and not about competition. Uh, I will say pretty likely. I'm probably the one that wants to like get up to tier five just for that sweet, sweet SPS. All right. So do you think you or do you and your guildmates still have plans to make regular upgrades to your buildings in the next six months using DC? Yes. If your guild was given the option to be able to have practice accounts that allowed you to play games against your fellow guildmates without prizes in order to practice for balls, would you utilize this? 100%. We'd have plenty of people wanting to use this from our guilds. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with A. So now we're going to ask about uh, what you would do if you were the split on the CEO for a day and could make any changes you wanted. Oh, boy. Okay. As split on the CEO, the very first thing I would change when it comes to guilds and brawls is adding in the contribution point system to protect players and incentivize them to level their level uh, their guilds up even if they are not the owner. Okay, Esplano CEO, if I could make more people, if, if I wanted to make more people join guilds, I would, oh, what other incentives? Uh, add more competitive elements such as guild tournaments and like head to head phrase. Yeah. Something like that. Just, just more things, more things to get like guilds to be able to interact with one another as entities, right? That would be really cool. So as Splendid CEO, I think the most important thing that is missing from guilds and brawls is I don't want to keep harping on this contribution point thing, but I'm going to, I'm going to say it. contribution points. Um, so as one CEO, I would delegate resources to work on these projects in this order. Oh, this is a lot. Reconfigure brawl schedule types. Uh, no, I, I think we can put that towards the bottom. Change the distribution of crowns merits. Nah. Uh, restructure guild building costs. I don't think we'd want to touch that. But new guild buildings should definitely be near the top. Um, create a system for guild DAOs, 100%. Redo guild rating. I would love that. UI UX overhaul. Create a looking for guild section. Create an in-game display, in display for brawl hit. Oh, yes. Actually, I would want this over the guild rating. Add more guilds. Yeah, sure. This part this, That kind of goes with like the UX UI overhaul, I think. Restructure guild. Okay. I think we're good with that. So as one on the CEO, how important would you tell the development team to treat guilds and brawls? It's the most important thing in the game. It is important, but not the most important thing in the game. Uh, I would go with B. It's important, but it's not the most important. All right. These questions are about your thoughts on what stops more players from joining. Okay. So do you believe that most players in Splendor have joined a guild and participated in brawls? I, I think so. Um, real players, as it, <laughs> at the very least. I think benefits for joining a guild are enough to encourage players to join one. Uh, I'm going to go with four. I think the rewards earned in brawls are enough to encourage players to participate regularly. I, I mean, I do agree with that. It's just like, why? It's it's free SPS. I mean, not free, but it's just like, why, why wouldn't you want to go and start playing in guilds and earning SPS there? What do you think is stopping players from wanting to join a guild? Um, if the guild charges fees that amount to higher than what is earnable. So what do you think is stopping players from wanting to participate in brawls on a regular basis? Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Time? Not enough time. I don't know. So how good of a job do you think Splinters does in in-game describing the benefits of joining, joining a guild? I'm going to actually go with a two on this. Uh, they're not very good at saying, I mean, giving the benefits. So we should be talking about that a lot more. So how good a job do you think this Polonis team does in-game explaining brawls and how to participate in them? 
Uh, I'm going to go with a three on this. I, for some reason, like I remember when I first joined the game, I, like I was still confused, right? Started a guild and I was just like, how does this thing all work? And I don't, I don't think that much has changed since then. I mean, we talk about it, so it's become se- second nature to me, but for newer players, I don't know that it's like necessarily intuitive. So the biggest thing in stopping uh, players from caring more about guilds and brawls in Splinterlands is um, more incentives to participate. Biggest thing about stopping players: more incentives to participate, and just and better ways to connect with guilds. All right, so overall rank <clears throat> these items based on the importance for Splendorless team to develop focus in the future. Uh, ooh, interesting. Okay, well, land by far goes towards the top. Tokenomics updates and changes, new game mode, non Splendorless project. Oh, this is this is going to be tough. Okay, so land goes near the top, or land goes at the top for me. Uh, I would love to see more with guilds and brawls. I would probably want to see tournaments after that. Battle Pass is good where it is. Actually, I'm going to put ranked updates and changes right behind land, just because ranked is, is still the biggest thing. Battles 2.0, that's fine. We can leave down there. New player experience, we can put that above. Battles 2.0. non splinterless projects, GLX, Tower Defense. New game mode, tokenomics. Uh, I mean, I'm a big tokenomics guy, so I... I'm actually going to put the tokenomics here. Uh, no, let's put guilds and brawls ahead of the tokenomics stuff. And we can put certain tournaments. <laughs> Again, I like this. there's no perfect way to put this here. non splinter lens-based projects, I actually do want to see... I actually do want to see more of that. I mean, I know people think it's a distraction, but um, I am personally excited about Tower Defense. I'm personally excited about Genesis League. And if those things can be fun and, and ways in which that we can engage with new audiences, new communities or build new communities. I, I think that could be, I think that'd be awesome. So yeah. What are your overall feelings that you want to share about guilds and brawls? Um, I think let's just say they are a fantastic way to interact with the game cooperatively with a sub sub community. There is so much potential and opportunity to build upon that. Cool. I think we're getting to the end. We're almost at question. I think it's like 60 something questions. So we're almost there guys. Thanks for hanging in here. What do you wish the Splinterlands leadership team would know here after listening to your feedback, even if it doesn't apply to guilds or brawls? Uh, what do you wish? Uh, I mean, this is the team. What do you wish the Splinterlands leadership team would know here after listening to your feedback? Um, I don't know. I'm just going to put an NA on this because that's a weird question for, for me to answer. All right. Oh, that's it. Thank you so much. Oh, so there's only 59 questions, not 60 something. So we made it through. Um, I, I don't know. Hopefully this was like entertaining for you guys. <laughs> if you've stuck with me all the way through this, I did not think it would be this long of a video, but I guess I type slow and I read slow. So thanks for, for sticking around. I would actually love to know. I mean, now that we're here, if we, we've been to the end, uh, was there anything in here that you agree with me or disagree with me or thought was good feedback that I should give to the team? Uh, maybe for that last question, I shouldn't have left it as NA, but I'm curious to know what would you want the team to know? Um, not that I have an open line of communication, but what would you want the team to know for that last question uh, after you've provided all your feedback, if you did? So I'm actually going to try to put a link for this in the uh, in the description of the video. So make sure you go and check it out and uh, and and enter it in. I know it took took about 20-ish minutes, but um, you know hopefully it'll be real helpful for, for Weirbeard and the team. All right, guys, that's all I have. Have an amazing rest of your day. I'll catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.